Do you dread even the thought of trying to start a diet? Maybe you've tried making sudden, massive lifestyle changes before, and it didn't work, and that just reinforced your belief that you can't lose weight, or that it's too hard. In this video, I'll be talking all about why making small, gradual changes works way better for sustainable weight loss than sudden, massive, crash, trendy diets. In episode one of this series, I talked a lot about building a positive mindset that is conducive to weight loss. And mindful eating starts with building the proper mindset. If you haven't watched episode one yet, now's a great time to go and check it out because it's the foundation of this entire series. This episode is about why making gradual changes over time works. My coming episodes over the next weeks and months of this weekly series is going to talk all about the how to make those gradual changes to for sustainable weight loss. I'm John Clark with Burkanio BQ. Thanks for joining me for this week's episode of Mindful Eating and Weight Loss Psychology. You know, I'm down about 45 pounds from where I was about two and a half months ago. But before I started, I dreaded even the thought of trying to lose weight again because I had failed before and I thought I would fail again. But I found ways past it. I've been making gradual changes over time rather than trying to overhaul my whole life overnight. You know, when I went to the doctor and I found that my resting heart rate was 95 beats per minute, I knew that the fact that I was 410 pounds was a big part of the problem, probably the biggest problem. And I knew that this was going to have severe health consequences down the road if I didn't make a change. But I just felt like it was going to depress me to even try to make that change. So instead of going on a crash diet, I took a few weeks to just think about what was making me feel this way. And I eventually found that I had some major deep-seated negative beliefs about my ability to lose weight, how I got that way, and the way forward. And they just weren't working in my favor. I found that perhaps my most deconstructive belief was this, that my past history of disability and medical problems were going to necessarily dictate my future. I had fallen into the trap of thought distortions, that I was permanently broken, that I was permanently weak, that I was permanently worthless, that I was useless, that I was unproductive, all because of all these past problems I had. And you know what? It actually sounds laughable now, almost laughable. But at the time, this was the cause of some pretty severe emotional stress for me, and it was the result of severe emotional stress. You see, I had some pretty serious problems before. When I was a teenager, I broke my back in a skiing accident. For 17 years, I suffered ever-increasing levels of chronic pain. I was in a wheelchair for several years. And at countless points throughout that process, I was in so much pain that I wished for death. And I also gained a lot of weight because of how I reacted to those stresses. Now notice I say how I reacted to those stresses, not because of those stresses. You have to take ownership of how you react to the stresses in your life. So how did I get past this? Well, even though I had a whole bunch of negative beliefs, I set about challenging just one. But why challenge just one? You know, it's really easy to have like a knee-jerk reaction and say, well, you know what, I see all this laundry list of problems in my life, and how I'm believing and how I'm thinking. So I'm just gonna try to fix them all at once. And if I do that, my whole life will improve. <laughs> right? It's, it's kind of a human nature to wanna to get it all done right now. But there are a lot of problems with this approach. First off, multitasking is largely a myth. Most people can do a whole bunch of things relatively poorly or focus on one thing and do it as excellently as possible. Secondly, Dealing with these type of deep-seated emotional beliefs can be emotionally and mentally exhausting. It's like the emotional equivalent of trying to drink from a fire hose if you try to think, fix them all at one time. And third, and probably the biggest problem with trying to do it all at once, is that if you get too overwhelmed, you get stressed out, you get burned out, when you don't succeed because you're taking on too much, it can reinforce the beliefs you're trying to fix to begin with that failure can lead to more negative beliefs. On the flip side, if you gain the experience of challenging successfully one belief and the habit surrounding it, 
Then it makes it easier to deal with the next ones more expediently and more effectively. I mean, think about a juggler. You ever seen a guy, you know, juggling six chainsaws? Well, I mean, he didn't pick up a chainsaw one day and start throwing them up in the air, right? No, they started with one ball, then two balls, then three balls, you know, and maybe years down the road, eventually got to those chainsaws, right? Well, trying to fix all of your problems at once can be just as dangerous for your future as juggling those chainsaws. Okay, well, maybe, I mean, it's not quite as sharp and stuff, but yeah, you get what I'm saying, right? <laughs> So I decided on one belief that I wanted to challenge. What was the next step? Well, if you watched episode one, you remember those behavior chains I was talking about? Yeah, all of these right here. Well, the first link in that behavior chain is a vulnerability, right? So I sat down and I thought about it and I made a list of all the behavior chains related to this one belief. Now, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that if you're still watching, there's a good chance that what I'm talking about is ringing true with you. And you're thinking, you know what, maybe I do have some of these negative beliefs. Maybe uh, this is what's holding me back from losing weight. If that's the case, I really think that checking into this weekly series that I'm doing can help you. So I encourage you to consider hitting that subscribe button down below and you'll get notified every time the next video comes out. So I had this list of all these behaviors that my belief was leaving me vulnerable to, right? Well, where do I get started? You know what, I didn't pick what I thought would be the most effective to lose weight right now. I didn't pick the hardest one, I picked the easiest one, obviously. Because all you need are small successes in order to begin to challenge that belief. You need evidence to show you that that belief just is not true. So why one behavior chain? Well. The fire hose thing, you know, the juggling thing, it's all, it's all the same concept, right? If I master one belief, one behavior chain, one habit, then I can start to break down the rest. I'll be getting into specific strategies for breaking these links in the behavior chain in future videos. But the, I hope what I'm starting to illustrate is why making these small changes over time is better and more effective. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, well, yeah, John, I don't know, this sounds like it's going to take a long time, and I just want to lose weight now. Well, I'm not going to blow smoke up your you-know-what. You didn't get to your current weight overnight, and you're not going to get back down to your ideal weight overnight either. It does take work. It does take time. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying it's worth it. But it will get easier over time. I can promise you that. If you still don't believe me about small changes adding up to big changes over time, let's just take a look at this graph of an exponential function. Whether you improve at 1% a day, 1% a week, or 1% a month, eventually you'll reach that huge curve and these small changes will have huge impacts on your life over time. So after listening to everything I've said here, you might have just this nagging suspicion that maybe you can do this, that maybe your beliefs are holding you back from losing weight. If so, my homework for you this week is to sit down and just write down a list of some of your beliefs that are holding you back. Don't hold any punches. Look deep. Be honest with yourself. In next week's video, I'm going to be talking about 14 thought distortions that are surrounding these beliefs and influencing you to believing them. And of course, getting into the strategies to break them down, prove to yourself they're not true. In videos down the road, I'll be discussing how to break behavior chains, the differences between failures and setbacks and how we think about them and so, so much more. We are just barely scratching the surface of this complex subject and I'm excited to tell you more. Once you have done your little homework assignment I've given you, go ahead and write them in the comments. You know what, you might be surprised to find that a lot of people think the same way you do. And that in and of itself can be motivational. Once again, I'm John Clark with Burkanio BQ. Thanks for joining me for this episode of Mindful Eating and Weight Loss Psychology. I'll see you next time.